we outlined some of the, the tools that you guys have been working on over at Walmart. Of those that we outlined, what is gaining most traction, right? This is about consumer behaviors and how we shop. And, and I guess I'm just curious to know which tool you think is going to change the game in that respect. Uh, th thanks, Ed, for having me on the show. At Walmart, we are at the cusp of dramatic changes that the customers are finding ways to discover, buy, and shop goods, right? Be it the speed of delivery, be it the way that they want to shop it in an online experience, which is very simple for them. It has been what we have been trying to do is to make it very easy for them to do their shopping. Uh, to your question on what is really uh, getting traction is, as we think about the Gen AI, decision assistant, and search uh, queries, those are things that the customers are really starting to use more, and we are seeing positive engagement so far. Srini, given the events of the last five days, I have to ask, where does your technology come from, the underlying large language model that powers the tool? So uh, at Walmart, we have always in, uh, invested in artificial intelligence, right? We have invested it in for transportation and other uh, forecasting and other optimizations that has made us what we are in our supply chain and in our our transportation sector. We have taken those learnings and then we have now combined that with the Gen AI tools that are available out in the public. Not any one specific tools. We have in, uh, done it with all large language models. And we are combining that with the extensive data that we have, which is our Walmart uh, uh, catalog and other data that we have seen by purchasing behaviors that we have seen. Right. And that's how we have trained our AI to make it really powerful. But is there a technology relationship with OpenAI and their GPT technology? No, we, we try to be LLM agnostic, right? What, what we are trying to basically get at is how do we get the language understanding correct with pretty much every other uh, provider. We've tried it with OpenAI, we use Google tools, and we also use other open source tools like Llama. What we have focused on is what we call our Walmart embeddings, which are our internal data that we really train the models on, which combined with the query understanding makes it very powerful. Srini, in the retail context, what are the biggest pitfalls and risks with bringing generative AI technology into the kind of sales and transaction stage of your relationship with the customer? I, I think... Uh, there are two ways you can look at it, Ed. Like the way that we have tried to frame it as like, what is the customer really looking for? Like, what are they really trying to do in a way that makes the shopping experience better? So what we've seen is the shoppers are doing multiple sessions and multiple things to really shop multiple products. What we are really trying to harness the power of Gen AI is, can I explain my problem? And I can get all the multi-product search at the same time. So I think that is kind of the, pro of Gen AI, what it does is it basically understands the query very much more uh, easily, and it's actually able to make your shopping experience much more simpler. Again, there are going to be learnings out of it as we discover how people actually interact with it in a conversational way, and that is where our model training and our improvements are going to make sure that we are leaning on the right side for the customer.